This is ARO. Telemetry link is good. Assuming mission control. Over. Copy, Capcom ARO. She is all yours. Over. All systems are go for separation. Separation confirmed. Entry protocol initiated. Entry vector is locked in. Hi, I'm Ed Robertson. Blazing a new path is full of challenges. For more than a decade, a small team from Canada has been preparing to change the way we explore Mars. Led by Dr. Ben Quine, a professor of space engineering at York University and space company Thoth Technology, the team has been developing the Northern Light mission to explore Mars. Our plan is more than just wishful thinking. Over the past few years, we've developed and tested the engineering models for the Northern Light mission. We've created a sophisticated instrument suite to explore the surface, the subsurface, and the atmosphere of Mars. Our primary science instrument, the Argus Infrared Spectrometer, is now celebrating six years in space, measuring greenhouse gases on Earth. The purpose of this campaign is to raise support for the operations and development of the Northern Light Flight hardware. We want to be ready to piggyback a ride to Mars in 2018. We're also going to make Northern Light systems commercially available for others to use at the same low cost. Getting to Mars is a tricky business. Here's just a taste of what Northern Light will have to endure. First, a bone-rattling rocket launch with forces up to 10 times that of gravity. Then comes the vacuum of space, where it will experience the extremes of heat and cold. Finally, a hazardous landing on the Martian surface. Some estimate the chances of a successful mission to be as low as 40%. So to ensure that Northern Light hardware will work on Mars, the Northern Light team has been testing everything, and then testing it again. Welcome to York University's top-notch space test facility. Today we're going to put the uh, lander in this thermal vacuum chamber, and we're going to simulate the environment of space, and then we're going to backfill with carbon dioxide in order to simulate the Martian environment. The facility features a custom-built thermal vacuum chamber that can cycle equipment under vacuum from minus 140 degrees Celsius to positive 140 degrees Celsius. It is here that the team developed and tested the engineering models for Northern Light. The facility also features a vibration test bed that simulates rocket launch. The space test facility has all of the tools to ensure that Northern Light flight hardware can survive the rough conditions of traveling through space and operating on Mars. The compact lander module survives testing. There is also a robotic arm. And Northern Light also has a micro rover called Beaver. Mark Post is Beaver's creator, and he's stuffed the five kilogram rover to the brim with all the latest gadgets. It's got a set of uh, solar panels. On the front, we've got a camera, as you can see. We have a, a set of infrared sensors front and back. Once Beaver is deployed on Mars, it will study the Martian environment and take pictures. Beaver operates semi-autonomously using intelligent sensors to avoid pitfalls and collisions with rocks. Northern Light also requires a ground station to provide the crucial link to Mars. The 46-meter radio antenna at the Algonquin Radio Observatory, or ARO, is the only dish in Canada that can track Northern Light's cruise to Mars and receive the weak signals that Northern Light will broadcast from the Martian surface. So in 2007, Thoth Technology assumed operations of ARO from the federal government. The team's mission? To get ARO up and running for Northern Light and other missions. If you're going to go to Mars, you've got to be able to talk to the lander uh, and uh, receive the information back again. The ARO dish is the biggest in Canada and one of the largest fully steerable dishes in the world. But when the team took it over, the system had a few bugs, literally. We discovered that underneath the pins that the telescope sits on, there was an enormous swarm of ladybirds. They swept that problem away, only to run into bigger problems. It can't get worse. It's catastrophic bearing failure. <laughs> it's a big job. Some of the bearings were so badly damaged that we had to cut them out with a plasma cutter. Without the Algonquin ground station, there is no mission so everyone was relieved to get ARO back online. Then there were cosmetic details, largely a do-it-yourself kind of project. Now with ARO refurbished and fully functional, the Northern Light team has a ground station, 
and they are ready to make history. Catherine Suvaltsidis is Operations Manager. At ARO, our plans for Northern Light are well advanced. It will be my responsibility to relay the first messages from the Martian surface and also to operate the lander systems remotely. Isaac D'Souza is project manager and he is ready to shake things up. The appeal of Northern Light for me is very strong. My generation has never had an impossible feat moment like the moon landing. When we land on Mars and post the images for all the world to see, it will herald a new way of doing things. We are ready to produce the flight hardware funded by ordinary people who believe. When you make a donation, you can vote for the landing site. We've narrowed it down to a choice of three landing sites. There is Aram Chaos, where there are hematite deposits. There is Casey Vallis, which may be a frozen lake bed. And then there is the so-called face on Mars at Sidonia. For a million dollars, you can name the lander. And everyone is invited to upload your own Mars dance to the Northern Light website at marsrocks.ca. We're inviting our supporters to upload a selfie video. Show us how you'll dance when we land on Mars. We'll send these videos with the lander. Let's dance on the red planet. So practice your dance moves. These are just a few of my dance moves. I got loads of them. I got. No, I better not do that one. So please join us on this incredible journey and support Northern Light. Mars rocks.